Hey, my name is Arseny and I run a real AI agency that automates real businesses with AI. In this video, we're going to do something different. We're going to take you through our entire process with my friend Steven here, who runs a super lucrative and very unique real estate business. The reason we decided to do this is because many people on YouTube today post all of these tutorials and hypothetical examples, but very few of them are actually making money from delivering real AI solutions. And trust me, the process for automating a real business is completely different from what you see here on YouTube. This is why so many people get stuck in the space when they actually try to apply this knowledge in practice. So in this video, we're going to take you to our entire five-step process for automating real businesses like Stevens, so you can see exactly what happens behind the scenes. So without further ado, let's dive right into it with the first step, which is AI strategy meeting. The goal of this meeting is to better understand your client's business and then identify the most promising opportunities to focus on next. So let's get started from the first question that I like to ask all of our clients, which is, Steven, can you please give us a brief overview of your business? Yeah, I run a real estate investment company and wholesaling business. We do about six figures a month in profit. And I'm just starting to automate and systematize the business because it's been very much just me for a long time. We have a team now, so I'm very anxious to have my AI transformation and makeover. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a position where a lot of businesses find themselves in today. You know, they've actually built some processes. They found like a niche, a product that works, but a lot of these businesses are not systematized enough. And I think AI can actually help a lot of businesses, not only to streamline their processes, but to also make sure that they're more reproducible. So this is my next question. What do you think your biggest bottlenecks are right now? Well, the biggest bottleneck in my business right now is having a streamlined process with deal flow. It's a little bit scattered. It's a little bit all over the place. I'm frantically jotting down things in different Word documents, different notes, and I don't have a, a centralized understanding of the complete deal flow. And what systems are currently involved in this process? Like, do you use any note-taking apps, any project management software, communication tools? We have a CRM that we're using. It's called REI Reply. And that's about as far as we've gone. We use Google Chats a lot to chat with each other. We email, we text. It's very dispersed. Okay, so I actually don't like to hear that, you know, because this is one of the things that I think a lot of business owners need to do in order to prepare for AI is to have like a single source of truth mm -hmm. for their data. Because, you know, the more scattered your data is, the harder it's going to be for AI to access it. However, of course, you know, this is why we're here. This is why, you know, we're helping our clients not just build AI solutions, but actually adapt for AI. And by the way, guys, don't forget that you need to take notes during this entire meeting with your client. Like, don't expect yourself to memorize all of these details. Make sure you actually record all of the key points from each question. Like, for example, all of the like systems involved are super important because this is how later on you're going to connect your agents and integrate them into your customer's business. And by the way, guys, if you want to access our free AI strategy meeting template, simply head over to our school community. So what are some of the most time consuming tasks in your business? So categorizing and tracking the cold leads is a big task. I would say that's probably 80% of the marketing that we do is categorizing leads and making sure they're in the right buckets. Also responding to the leads quickly is very big for us. That's on the marketing side. On the fulfillment side, when we are closing deals or wholesaling a deal, the transaction coordination process is insane. And I hate it. It's my least favorite thing to do. It's a lot of details. And there's a lot of paperwork that goes along with that as well. So all that detail is, is a lot to keep up with. Got it. So basically right now, in order to close a deal, you need to communicate with multiple people and kind of coordinate between all of them to make sure that you know everyone is aligned on you know what's actually happening. Exactly. Right? And multiple okay. times. You have to do it probably, you know, two or three times a week for at least a month. Okay. And what are some of the highest paying roles in your company? Uh, the highest paying role would be the lead managers. They get a big percentage of any kind of profit and closed deal that comes in to the company. Mm, I see. Okay. So by this point, guys, I already can see that the lead flow is actually one of the biggest opportunities here because it seems like it's much easier than the second process that Steven said is 
time consuming, which is coordinating multiple people, because it seems like, you know, with coordinating multiple people, there are going to be a lot of different communication platforms involved. And additionally, agents today are not really trained to communicate with multiple people. Like you can do that if you want to, but fundamentally these agents are trained to communicate only with a single user. So right now it seems like, first of all, the lead flow is going to be much easier for me to automate. And secondly, because Steven also mentioned that it's one of the highest paying roles, it seems like it's also going to bring a significant return on investment. So this is why I do want to focus on this process first. And in order to actually automate that process, what I also like to do is map it out on Figma. I would have never thought to automate the highest potential income task first. I would have thought to automate the stuff that I didn't like, but this makes way more sense to automate the stuff that is costing the most money. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about, you know, whether we can justify the price for our solutions, because otherwise, if we don't deliver you something that brings you more returns on your investment, obviously, you're not going to continue with us. Although, of course, you know, if there are certain tasks that you personally don't enjoy doing, this is also something pretty important. However, we don't like to automate these processes first because we want to show you real results and then go on onto like things that are more like nice to have. Makes a ton of sense. So let's jump into Figma right now and let's try to map out this entire process for Steven. So here's our Figma board. So Steven, first of all, what triggers this process? Like what event actually initiates like this flow? So we have an SMS text message marketing blast that goes out. So it's like an SMS campaign. Yes, an SMS campaign. Okay, perfect. And what happens next? Then it goes to our lead manager and the lead manager will screen the text to see if there's potential or interest. So the lead manager basically manually checks all of the texts and sees if someone is interested or not. Yes. Okay, so this this already I think is a pretty great opportunity for us because you know AI is extremely good at analyzing the data. So what happens after the... Uh, lead manager confirmed that the lead is you know, qualified or interested. So the ones that are unqualified go into different buckets mm. for repeat SMX campaigns in the future. Okay, so if the lead is not qualified or not interested, basically you put them back into a future campaign. Yes. And then if they are qualified or are interested, then they're going to Google form that the lead manager fills out, which sends to my acquisition manager, and that's known as a hot lead. So hot leads go immediately to the acquisition manager. Mm -hmm. And what's the Google form for? The Google form is to fill out all the details of the property. So the age of the property, the systems, if they're new or not, what's the story of the property. So just more of the details around this potential deal and their motivation score. Okay, awesome. So can you provide us with this form? Because I think this is exactly what we're going to use in order for the agent to assist you with this process. Totally. Awesome. So definitely, guys, make sure that you ask for access to any of these Google Forms or any other documents that are involved during the process, because you know this is exactly what the agent is going to use in order to perform this process autonomously. Okay, and uh, what happens after the lead goes to acquisition manager? So it goes to the acquisition manager, and then the acquisition manager tries to call and close the deal. Mm. Or the acquisition manager will call me to get more details about where we need to be on our offer. So the acquisition will then make an offer is basically what will happen next. Okay, so the acquisition manager might call either you or the client first. Is there any like specific conditions when the acquisition manager needs to call you? Maybe it's like the deal size? Yeah, so we need to figure out, the acquisitions uh, manager, one of their main tasks is to figure out how much the home is worth. Mm. So that's his main thing that he does. He pulls the comps, He figures out how much the home is worth. Mm -hmm. And that takes us a lot of time too, because it's not just an easy Mm. science. It's very different case by case basis. Okay. So basically if the deal is larger than a certain size, it goes to you for confirmation. And if not, it goes directly to the acquisition manager who then closes the deal. For the most part, yes. Once I give it confirmation, the acquisition manager will try to, I'll ping it back to him and he'll put it in their contract. Perfect. So, what also happens before the deal is closed? So I suppose there's like some form of like a contract drafting process, something like this? Yes, yes, great point. So as soon as the acquisition manager and I come up with a price that we think the home is worth, he will call and make an offer. If they accept, then we draft a contract. And uh, do you have any specific templates that you use for creating the contract? And what information do you use to fill them out? 
Yes, we have the same contract that we use for everything. And then what we need is the owner's name, the price, and how much our deposit is, our earnest money deposit is. Okay, perfect. So definitely, guys, make sure you collect all of these details because this is incredibly useful. You know, If you have the contract template, you can easily create a tool that will just simply take the same parameters, like the name, deposit, and price, and then fill it out completely autonomously. Okay, and um, after the contract is created... Mm -hmm. Then we upload it to DocuSign, mm -hmm. which is a software, and we send it out to me, the buyer, and then also mm -hmm. the seller of the home to sign. Got it. And then basically after it's signed, then you know the deal is closed. Yeah, then it kicks into the other transaction coordination stuff. But we want to focus on this for right now because this is the highest value. This is the highest yeah. amount of money that I pay in the business. Okay, got it. And then basically there's like another process for transaction coordination. Yes. Okay, perfect. But that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest money maker right there. Getting something signed is my biggest expense and my biggest profit area. Perfect. So now we have this complete flow for this specific process. As you can see, it's pretty comprehensive. And this is honestly like one of the most valuable things that businesses have. It's like these like step-by-step -step things that they figured out are working and are bringing them consistent results. So make sure guys that you actually find un and uncover these processes. Many businesses do have SOPs and even those diagrams already documented for you in advance. So make sure that you ask for those SOPs. But in case if the client does not have it, which also of course happens extremely frequently, then you can simply do something like this, map out the process. And now instantly you have so many ideas on where specifically you could come in and automate certain parts of this process. Honestly, I believe that we can even automate this entire process. There are some challenging steps, like for example, calling the owners of the house and confirming the price, which will require voice AI agents. But I do believe that this is totally possible even today. So I think I'm going to try to even automate this entire thing, make it fully autonomous in maybe a, it's probably going to take me more than one video, but I think it would be a, a very cool case study. That would be very exciting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But for this specific part, I think what I'm going to focus on is definitely on screening the leads. So making sure that the leads are qualified because, you know, this is again what AI excels at and you don't want, you know, your human employees to spend time on that because it's a very, very simple task. And especially if the payroll for this specific position is high, you don't want, you know, people performing this manually because, you know, anyone can do this. And also on there too, to your point, which is a great point, is that that takes about five hours of someone's time a day and he has to be available during those hours. Mm -hmm. So it's very highly contingent on his schedule. And so if he's out, he was out yesterday for his birthday, very selfish. And I'm teasing. And he, we were not able to do this. So it was a huge bottleneck. And also, we're not able to increase our SMS text messaging campaigns to a certain amount because there's only so much time that he has. So we're sending out somewhere about 2,000 text messages a day. And it would be really great if we could do 5,000. We have the capacity and we have everything else like that. But we just get bottlenecked by his amount of time that yeah. he can't take it. Absolutely. So this is also... A great advantage of having AI in your systems. It helps your business to scale almost infinitely because as soon as you have, you know, one specific AI agent or one specific AI automations inside your process, it can basically scale to oblivion, which means that you don't have to hire more people to perform this task anymore because AI is infinitely scalable. So the second thing I definitely want to focus on is the fill out of those Google Forms. I have one more question. Where do we get this information for uh, the Google Form? Is it just from the text messages or is, it, is there also like some additional other resources? Like maybe there's like a website listing or something. Yeah, so once the lead manager talks to them, this is the notes from the phone call. Mm. And in addition to that, there's a lot of information about the home that can be pulled from like Zillow and Realtor.com. That's mm -hmm. where he pulls a lot of that information about the home. Okay, great. So definitely, guys, record all of these details because, again, this is what the agent is going to use to actually fill out those forms. Um, and do you save those uh, phone calls anywhere? Like, for example, can we access the audio in your CRM? Yes. Yeah? Awesome. Perfect. I also feel like this is going to make me a better business person because I'm thinking about all the things now that I see the flow yeah. of the lead that I have under-optimized in the past. A great example, I have all the calls recorded and I've said for weeks that I've been listening to the calls or was planning to listen to the calls and I have not listened to my calls yet. 
Yeah, once you have this uh, process mapped out, you can actually find even more exciting opportunities on how to optimize it even further. And especially if you know you're working with someone else like me or I mean, someone from our community, they can also suggest some improvements. For, for example, I can already see that you know if you have all of the phone recordings in CRM, you can extract a lot more valuable information from that. So you don't just have to extract what you have there in a Google form. You can also extract like things, you know, why are the buyers not interested? Like what's preventing them from moving forward and so on. That's genius. That's very cool. I would have never thought about that in a million years. Yeah, and the best part is that AI can integrate directly into your CRM, which means that we can actually keep all of this information directly, you know, under your metadata on the CRM for that specifically. Sick. Once again, I think that I know my business and my business landscape, and I know my competitors, and no one is doing this right now. Yes. So even if, and I think it's going to be a lot more than this number, but even if it just gives me a 1% advantage across the board with my competitors, it's going to be well worth it because the amounts are so big. But I have a feeling that it's going to give me a, you know, 50% advantage over everyone right now, even just in a, in a small amount of time. So it's very, very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that it can actually be even more, like way more than 50%. Of course, it's not going to be like that from the very start. You know, this is why we have a five-step process. It's not a one-step process. There's some iteration involved in order to really perfect the AI system. But I do believe that this whole process can definitely be automated in the next few months with voice AI agents. So I think this definitely something that I would be really interested in doing myself. Good, because I wouldn't be able to afford you if not. <laughs> I, think you, I think you would be honest. Actually, I think you would not be able to not afford me. Okay, perfect. So I think I have um, enough of information for now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to ask Steven for access to all of these systems. So I'm going to ask him to create uh, an account for me in his CRM. I'm going to ask for some example data. And then after that, I'm going to actually build this agent with you guys live. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do next in order to automate uh, this lead qualification and form filling out process. And while you do that, I'm going to go to the beach. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Actually, I do need one more thing from you, Steven. Mm -hmm. So we just have to create an uh, account on our platform okay. on Agency AI. So this is what we're going to be using to build the AI agent itself. And then I'm going to show you like how we are actually going to integrate it into your CRM. Amazing. So it should only take like uh, a couple minutes. And then I think we're going to be good to get started on actually building this out. Sick, let's do it.